Chapter 8 introduces the concept of prolongation and, or, or rather, it ad addresses it head on and specifically for the first time. And it's with this concept of prolongation that the the notions of Schenker analysis move into a new level. And what I mean is this, is if we have a look at the examples that, he's, that Fulton Gilbert have given on, on this page, if we look at this middle one, this in a sense, is the sort of thing that you've been doing up until now. It's very familiar. Uh, in, a, in essence, the, the task is to take out the, the clearly decorative notes. I and mean, you can see in these little runs and elaborations that there are some underlying fundamental things here. This is a this is a chord one. And it's easy to see that that C is not part of chord one. It's a decoration. It's a, it's a passing note. And these are passing notes and so on and so forth. But the concept of prolongation goes one step further and, 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 and actually uh, suggests that whole chords themselves function simply to spin out or extend, to, to prolong the more fundamental harmony. So while this exercise is quite, yeah, we can do that. We've been doing that since, since the exercise in eliminating neighbor notes or auxiliary notes way back a month or two ago. These two examples are slightly more challenging. I'll just scroll down a little bit. So what they're arguing here is that this entire first bar with four quite separate chords, and there's not a lot of elaboration going on, but nevertheless what the function of the harmony is to do is to just extend chord one. It starts in chord one, goes to chord four, five, then back to chord one, and effectively that, pro the, that harmonic progression itself elaborates something more fundamental, which is, which is just chord one. And in a sense, it, it's, it's quite obvious. It, it doesn't actually go anywhere. It starts in one, and it comes back to one. Then we move somewhere, we move to six. We start in six, go back to six. Um, and so on. So, this notion that prolongation, that entire chords can prolong um, more fundamental chords is, is, is the key notion for, for Schenkerian reduction. And that's how we can you know, ultimately reduce entire movements down to a few chords. Whether we want to do that is, is another question, but, but we can through this process. So jumping ahead now to um, the exercise I want you to attempt just in passing, this little sketch over here, as, as I'm sure you've read, is, is in fact the worked reduction of that little Mozart B-flat um, opening that, that we, we spoke about earlier in the first part of this video. It's exercise three that I want you to have a look at. So I want you to reduce this. Now, this is actually quite simple. Um, but where I want you to end up is actually uh, working at what the, the structurally significant chords are in this sorry, in this first phrase. There's, and, and we'll get to the stage where you actually remove remove some of the chords, these surface level chords, to reveal the underlying fundamental harmonic structure. I can tell you now, the overall function of the whole eight bars is to start in C and to finish in C. And so that all of this prolongs C. But just as we found with the little Chopin example that, that I talked you through a moment ago, you might be able to reduce the harmonic motion here, simple though it is, to something even, even simpler. So have a go at that.